Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about membrane transport. I know you probably heard this name a lot of times and you know little about it. But in this video, we are going to summarize all the topics and ideas about the membrane transport regarding uh, all the different details and types, just the basic summary. So membrane transport means the transportation of molecules through plasma membrane or it's also known as a cell membrane. We all know that cell contains a membrane outside which surrounds the cell, which surrounds the cytosol and cell membrane is one of the very very important uh, organelle of the organism we can say or important part of the cell because cell membrane actually keeps the barrier between the intracellular space and the extracellular space and there are solution and differences between these two and different uh, different what we say can uh, different uh, molecular processes difference also between the intracellular and extracellular space but this cell membrane is very interesting because you know uh, it's it's just uh, an idea is normally outside the cell membrane always entropy is increasing if you know the concept of entropy and uh, and uh, the uh, thermodynamics entropy is chaos entropy is increasing everywhere wherever whatever process is going on that's the law of nature but inside the cell membrane that is inside a cell entropy gets decreased in some cases right it's things get organized instead of disorganization so those thing is very interesting about cell membrane but the thing is about cell membrane transport cell membrane transport can be divided into two different ways which depends on either energy or not that is uh, we use energy to differentiate between the two different major modes of membrane transport transport means we have a barrier right why we require transport we require transport because cell requires things from outside right cell needs to get the nutrients from outside which is present in the extracellular space they need to uptake the nutrients in and also cell have lot of debris build up inside a lot of toxic materials build up inside cell need to get away of all those things to get that away they also need transport the mechanism by which they can uptake something inside the cell and also they can release something outside the cell that's why cell transport is very very important membrane transport is very very important now membrane transport means the transport process where the cell membrane is involved and obviously as the cell membrane is the boundary of this of a cell then let's say here as let's say this is a cell membrane now obviously you know cell membrane is a double layer it's a bilayer of lipids we call them phospholipids right phospholipid bilayer now this cell membrane as as it's a boundary so whenever we're talking about membrane transport we're talking about either uptake something from outside or releasing something outside right it's there and there is also a transport machine machinery present inside the cell the extra cell intracellular transport that is uh, with all those vesicles that are formed and uh, with all the different vesicular trafficking processes that is going on inside but membrane transport means it is dealing with outside or outside world now the membrane transport can be divided into two different part as i told you majorly two different part one is the passive transport another one is the active transport okay and we differentiate it based on the requirement of energy and the energy source is atp right the energy currency of a cell now in the those type of transport where energy is required is known as active transport and the type of transport where energy does not require is known as passive transport so in passive transport no atp required active transport atp required now why we require energy for transporting a molecule now think of the scenario in passive transport what happens it is more similar with the phenomena known as diffusion diffusion you know diffusion diffusion is a chemical process in which process what we know is molecules move from high concentration to the low concentration that is known as diffusion right now once you drop uh, some ink in the water well what you will see that that ink will first drop into the water and slowly start to spread throughout the water turning the whole water the color of the ink right why because the molecules of the ink will merge throughout the water why because the molecular concentration of that ink that is present will is higher there and slowly it is diffusing throughout the uh, 
uh, water to make the concentration equal throughout the water okay through the glass okay the idea was if there is a concentration gradient a concentration difference present high and low molecules from the higher concentration will go towards the more lower concentration so that they build up a homogenized concentration gradient so that they make it stable after some time the concentration from both the side will be the same and the whole process of diffusion will stop that is the idea of diffusion so for a diffusion let's assume outside this cell there are outside this cell there are many let's say oxygen is present okay high concentration of oxygen outside here low concentration of oxygen inside the cell so what oxygen can do as higher concentration here lower concentration here it can easily diffuse through the cell membrane it will diffuse through the cell membrane inside the cell okay this is called diffusion and in this case as they are going from high to low by the diffusion they don't need any sense of energy or any sort of energy okay now if a molecule try to get from a low concentration site to a high concentration site in that case the molecule it's not naturally possible they require some energy source to kick it off to the higher concentration level from low so we are going against the concentration gradient right in passive we go down the concentration gradient let me write it down we go down the concentration gradient and in case of active transport we get against the concentration gradient okay now the scenario let's say here we have sodium ions present inside the cell very less and very high concentration of sodium ions present outside the cell okay so what is the idea we have a high concentration outside a low concentration inside okay now sodium can easily flow from this outside to inside down the concentration gradient if it's possible okay but here if we want our intracellular sodium to go to outside in that case we require energy because it's normally not possible okay so it will move okay so in summary in active transport we require energy as atp to transfer molecules from low concentration gradient to the higher concentration gradient now it is the overview but there is a question there are certain molecules that can easily pass through cell membrane because you know cell membrane is a lipid bilayer lipid bilayer means they have a phospholipid heads outside okay phospholipid heads outside the phosphate group is the outside which is surrounding the outer or extra cellular space and also the intracellular region also the inner side of the cell but in the middle there are hydrophobic regions so mo hydrophilic molecules like water cannot pass through the cell membrane directly using the common diffusion or the general diffusion like i said that oxygen carbon dioxide they can easily pass they can easily diffuse through the lipid bilayer because they don't have any nature of hydrophilic or hydrophobic uh, way to go but water is a hydrophilic molecule and actually is uh, the water so it's the most hydrophilic i can say now water will start passing the cell membrane first it can interact with the phosphate layer it's fine but inside there is a lipid layer or hydrophobic layer which water can not pass okay so for that we need specific chambers we need specific channels to be present in the cell membrane so that water or any other hydrophilic molecule can pass they cannot pass even if the concentration of water is higher outside uh, lower inside according to the diffusion it should pass but it cannot due to the hydrophobicity here so they need some channel proteins to pass okay so in both the cases in passive transport as well as in active transport we have either requirement of a extra protein a membrane protein or we may not require membrane protein but remember if it's a passive transport two options are there the passive transport can occur through normal common diffusion without any extra membrane protein okay without membrane protein 
or it can also occur with membrane protein. The example I gave you, water. If water concentration, let's say high outside, and water needs to transport inside the cell. It requires a specific protein to bring it inside. Though it's a diffusion, though it, they don't require any energy to do that, but still they require an extra protein for this purpose. Okay. The example, the name of the protein is aquaporin that is used to drag water inside the cell. So in passive, we can have a membrane protein in the function of diffusion or may not. So if a diffusion, if, if this passive transport occurs without any membrane protein, we, know, we call it a simple diffusion. If a passive transport occur in presence of a membrane protein, another example is a normal sodium transport. Normal, these are, these are called ion channel membrane proteins that should be present to transport sodium or calcium or different ions because ions cannot directly pass through the cell membrane because ions cannot do that, they, can, uh, they, they, they cannot easily pass because, they, because of the interactions that are present in, inside. Okay? So they, they all require specific membrane proteins, they can be carrier protein or they can be uh, channel proteins. We will be talking about those proteins later in the ne next video, but they cannot do it on its own. So they require help of a protein. Now if during the passive transport, it requires the help of a membrane protein, we call it facilitated diffusion. Though it's a diffusion, but it's facilitated due to the presence of another membrane protein. We call it facilitated diffusion. So that's about the passive. But if you look at the active transport, active transport can never occur without a membrane protein. Active transport must require a membrane protein. So membrane protein must be required. Okay, that is the idea of active transport. Requires energy, it go against the concentration gradient, membrane protein must be required. Okay, because in this case it's no way possible. So these are the overview of passive transport and active transport. Now if you go in active transport in little bit more details, active transport means against the concentration gradient requires energy as ATP hydrolysis. Now active transport is of two different types. One is known as primary active transport, another one is secondary active transport. In primary active transport, in, in this process, ATP is required directly. For example, as I told you, sodium needs to be taken outside, okay. ATP can be required directly uh, in this way or any other molecules that is moving from low concentration to higher concentration using direct ATP is a primary active transport, but active transport can be a coupled, that is the second type I told you, secondary active transport, they are also known as coupled transport. Now what we do in coupled transport, okay, now let us assume glucose concentration is high inside the cell, sodium concentration is low inside the cell, okay, so sodium concentration high outside, glucose is low outside. So what we need to do, we always, a cell always requires glucose because it's the energy source. So even if the glucose concentration is less outside, cells still need to take it, right? So glucose is low outside, so if glucose needs to be transported inside, it needs to go against the concentration gradient. So it is the mode of active transport requires energy. Now in this case, they don't go using direct ATP, instead of that, you know, sodium concentration is very high outside while sodium is low inside. So what they are doing, they have a specific membrane protein, they are known as co-transporter. Using this membrane protein, this membrane protein has binding site for both sodium as well as glucose. So sodium also binds, glucose also binds. Now as sodium is moving from high to low concentration gradient, which is favorable, they get this energy of going high to low and use it to pump glucose from low to high. So sodium is moving from high to low down the concentration gradient and they use this energy, couple this energy to drag glucose from low concentration to high concentration without using any further ATP, right. So energy for one 
movement of one molecule is used to drag another molecule against its concentration gradient. This is known as secondary active transport. Though it's an active transport, but it's a secondary kind, does not require direct ATP source, but it is a type of active transport. Okay, so these are the two different modes of active transport. I told you primary and secondary. So in essence, this is all the different types of membrane transport that we know. Of, okay, hopefully uh, you like this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel. The links are given here to get more and more videos like that. Thank you.